I want to say this to you. Do you know what? We are all surrendered. Do you know that? We are all surrendered. It's not that just Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were surrendered. The difference was who they were surrendered to. See, all the other Jewish uh, young men that were taken into captivity that ended up in the service of Babylon and King Nebuchadnezzar, they did surrender, but they surrendered to King Nebuchadnezzar, whereas these three young men decided to surrender to God. You know, I was thinking about this. I would say there's three things that all of us are surrendered to in this room. There's not one of us that is not surrendered, but we're either surrendered to our flesh, what we want, we're surrendered to the devil, what he wants, or we're surrendered to God and what God wants. And today I want to tell you, God wants us to be surrendered fully and wholly to him. There's a quote from John Wesley I love. It says, give me a hundred men who fear nothing but sin and desire nothing but God. And I care not whether they be clergymen or laymen. They alone will shake the gates of hell and set up the kingdom of heaven upon the earth. John Wesley. You know, think about this. A hundred men that love only God and hate only sin can change the world and shake, shake the world to see Jesus. Think about what 12 disciples did. They changed the world. We're still preaching the gospel today. Can you imagine if we as a church began to live this out where we were so surrendered to Jesus that there was something so on fire in our hearts, we would have an impact. So this morning as I dive in, I want you to open up your heart. God might be tapping on an area in your heart. Only you might know what that area is, but surrender it to Jesus. Number one, surrendering to Christ. It's going to cost you everything. You know, these young men, they literally laid their bodies on the line, it says. They laid their lives on the line. For some people, it, it's going to cost their life. There's places around the world to this day where, where they're giving their lives literally because they're not, they're, they're not, um, they're serving Jesus. So literally, they're losing their life for that. And in Daniel 3, it says, if you don't worship it, you'll be pitched into the furnace, no questions asked. Who is God who can rescue you from that power? You're going to have defining moments in your life where you're challenged. You're going to be challenged. I wish I could tell you you serve Christ and everything would be like peaches and cream, but it's not. You're going to be challenged. There's going to be defining moments. You know, for these young men, there's defining moments came a long time before this moment. In Daniel 1, they had their first defining moment. Because what happened was King Nebuchadnezzar conquered Jerusalem, took all of the people captive, and what King Nebuchadnezzar, I can't say his name, Nebuchadnezzar did was he took the very best of the young men, the one that were the most educated, the ones that it literally says are the best looking, they had no physical defect, they were the most educated, smart, discerning, they were the best young men that Jerusalem had to offer. He took them all, and the king decided to put them to work in his court. And when he put them to work in his court, he said, I want them to have the best of food. I want them to have the best of clothing. I want them to have the best wine, the best savory meats. And do you know what these young men hit? They had a choice because that violated what the Lord had asked them to eat. The Lord had put some stipulations on what these young men were supposed to eat. And they had a choice way back in Daniel 1 that set them up for Daniel 3. So there's going to be little tests in our lives that lead us to sometimes the big tests in our lives. And you may think, oh, nobody knows. That's just a kind of a little compromise. Like, who cares? Who knows? What is God looking for in you? He's not looking for compromise. He's looking for surrender. He's looking for you to say, yes, Jesus, here is everything. But there's going to be some obedience in some small tests in your life. Will you compromise? You know, I want to say this too. The enemy will try to use your gifts and talents for his purposes. Think about this. This king saw their talents, saw their wisdom, saw their education, saw their discernment. And he said, I want those. I want to use those. Do you know what? The enemy absolutely wants to use your giftings. He wants to use your talents. He wants to use everything that you have. He wants to use it for his purposes. But the Lord is fighting to use your gifts and your talents for a kingdom purpose. Because he created you that way. He's, he's waiting. And sometimes these tests in the little moments set us up for the big moments that God has in our life. And he's asking for it all. Those small defining moments is what's going to define you as you move forward. So ask yourself this question, who are you surrendering to? 
because you're surrendering to someone. Number two, our surrender must be unconditional. That phrase that we ended with, but even if he doesn't, so often we put conditions on our surrender. God, if you heal me, I will worship you. God, if you provide for my rent this month, I will serve you. God, if you fix this, if you do this, I will do that. But you know what? These, these young men, they didn't know that God was going to rescue them. In fact, they said they didn't even care. It didn't make a difference. What if instead we reversed that and said, not, not instead of, if God does this, I will worship. If God does this, I will surrender. But if, what if we say, I will surrender, even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't fix this situation, even if he doesn't heal my body, I worship you, God. I worship you, God, no matter what. That is surrender. It's not truly surrender if you're getting something in return. If you're just con- like counting on getting something in return, that's not surrender. That's conditions. That's not real what we're talking about. Jesus wants your heart. He wants your life. He wants everything. In return, he will give you your life back. I love this. Their their surrender was not based on what God was going to do. It was on who he was. They worshiped God. The truest form of surrender is so often obedience. Do you know, um, there's a story in the Bible where David, or where Samuel instructed King Saul to um, wait to do the sacrifice or wait to worship. And Saul went ahead and did it and he disobeyed what the Lord had said. And in his justification, he said, but I was worshiping, I was sacrificing. And you know what Samuel said? He said, the Lord wants obedience more than sacrifice. So we come into church and we wanna worship, and man, I'm right there up in front. Worshiping on Sundays is like my very favorite place to be, whether I'm up here or down there, it doesn't even matter. It's my very favorite moment of my week, I love it. But you know what, if Monday comes around and the Lord taps on my heart and says, hey, I want you to do something, and I say no, God would rather have me say yes in that moment and not worship on Sunday morning because obedience is the truest form of surrender. And that surrender is as worship to Jesus. You know, um, years ago, before we moved here, um, there was this moment, we were youth pastors in Portland, Oregon, and uh, I was sitting in service, and I felt all of a sudden, in the middle of the message, I was all of a sudden aware of the Lord's voice. My heart was pounding, and all of a sudden, I felt like God was talking to me. It hasn't happened very many times in my life, so uh, vivid, but this was one of those moments where I heard God's voice, and he asked me a question, and he said, will you give me your pearls? And I kind of just was like, where did that come from? I don't even have a set of pearls. I don't think about pearls. I didn't know about the pearl church yet. Otherwise, I would have been like, oh, okay. But, you know, this question kept coming. So I'm trying to listen to the message and shake this, like, voice that is getting louder and louder in my head. And it was, will you give me your pearls? And I kept saying, God, I have no idea what you're saying. I even wrote it in my journal. I flipped my notes journal to the back. And I was like, what are you trying to tell me? I didn't understand it, and just the question, nothing else, just the question. And finally, this moment in my life where I said, God, what, yes, I don't know what you're asking, but yes, I'll say yes. The moment I said yes, something happened. I remembered a story. I remembered a story that our pastor had told like years and years before that of a little girl and she had a set of pearls, imitation pearls that her father had given to her at a birthday and she was, it was her very favorite thing. She would wear those set of pearls for every special occasion and she was so excited about her set of pearls. Well, one day, a few years later, the dad asked the girl, he said, hey, would you give me those pearls? And the girl was like, uh, no, you gave them to me. Why would I give them back to you? You gave them to me, they're mine. And the dad just every day would just say, hey, are you ready? Can you give me your pearls? And that daughter would fight. The daughter said, okay, dad, I'll trust you, so I'll give you my pearls. And of course, the dad left and went back to his room, and there he had tucked into a drawer a real set of pearls that he was waiting for his daughter to trust him with the imitation pearls he'd given her years before. But you see, you know, our yes has to come without conditions. See, the father didn't say, hey, give me those pearls because I got a real set around the corner. He doesn't say that to us. We don't know what's around the corner. These boys that said yes to God, that they would not surrender to this king. They did not know that God was going to use them and this whole amazing story that would be written in history so we could read it and preach about it. They had no idea what was on the other side of their yes. All they knew is that God asked them for a yes. 
So God's looking at you in your life. I don't know what that area is. Maybe you're holding some area in your life back. Today, God's asking for a yes from you. And it's got to be unconditioned. Our unconditional, our yes has to be without conditions. Number three, our surrender draw, draws God's presence near. I love in that verse when it says, oh, but look, I see four men walking in the fire. See, there is something like a magnet. You know a magnet where it's just like it can't avoid each other. It's like when we surrender to Jesus, when we surrender our hearts to Jesus, our minds, our will, our affections, when we surrender, it is like this magnet for God's presence where literally he cannot even avoid being around you. I think those are the moments where God's presence is the realest. When I have literally gone through something I've had to lay down. When I've had to lay an area down in my life where God says, I'm going to move you across the country. When you have to lay something down are the times where God's presence is so dear. Andrew Murray said this, just as water seeks and fills the lowest place, so the moment God finds you abased and empty, his glory and his power flows in. I don't know if you're at a low place tonight. You might be this morning. But God wants to fill you with his presence. All he's waiting for is a yes. Yes, God, I trust you. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to trust you. Yes, Lord, whatever you want to do in my life. Yes, Lord, you want to make that decision? Yes, Lord, you want me to give that money? Yes, Lord, you want me to reach out to that girl? Yes, Lord, whatever it is you want from me today. That's what God is attracted to. He's attracted to the yes. You know, there was a song in the midst of that season, you know, when that that thing happened to me where the Lord said, would you give me my pearls? Denver had never come up yet. Doug and I had never had one conversation about it. We hadn't actually even gone talking about planning a church or anything like that yet. It was just this kind of like transition. We kind of felt like God was doing something, but we didn't know what. Well, fast forward a year or two, we were at youth camp and now Doug and I had been really feeling that God was stirring us and we were about to get sent out. And we were at youth camp. We hadn't talked about this with anybody yet. And Doug leaned over to me as he does sometimes, and just takes me off guard. And we're at youth camp. There's about 800 young people around. Like, life is is the best life. You know, we're, like, doing it. It's so fun. We have, like, great youth pastors on staff. Seema and Lisa were part of that. We just, life was good. Young people are getting literally transformed at every altar call. Like, yes, I want to live this. And Doug leans over to me, and he goes, so this is probably going to be our last youth camp. I just thought you should know. <laughs> I'm like, wait like steal my moment like I'm like and all of a sudden like the reality of the yes that we were about to say to God was going to literally change my life well a couple years early I'd written a song maybe even three years before that I'd written a song called I Give and um, they're going to put the words up on the screen but I'd written this song actually to be 100% honest I confess this a couple times and I confess in the first service but this song was burst out of a, an argument with my husband <laughs> because um, there, was, there was a lot of we were doing at the moment and um, we have three little kids and it was feeling like it was like too much and I was a little bit mad because he said he was involved with something that honestly was incredible that he was doing in ministry and, and I was fighting with him a little bit and God just like spanked my attitude and said, do you want to make a difference? What are you showing your kids do you want to make a difference with your life? And God like just dealt with my heart. So I went to the piano and I sang these words. I give my life to you. I'm ready to give you the life that I've known. I give my heart to you. Take all of me. I believe in you. What I was talking about when I wrote the words was I don't want to live with this cycle of bad attitudes where I like have a bad attitude about something. So I, I'm, that's how I wrote it. That was my intention. Well, here we are at this camp. Doug tells me, FYI, this is probably our last camp. And I'm like, Oh, like, so I go back to my room and cry and get my Bible out and get back to a place of surrender. Like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't want to do this. This is not, no, like, and I'm just wrestling. I get back to that place with Jesus where I was surrendered to God again. Okay, God, whatever that yes means. Okay, okay, yes, yes, yes. So I kind of sneak back into in the worship had already started. And uh, normally I was the one, if we ever did that song, I would lead that song, and um, I wasn't even on worship schedule that night, thank goodness, but I came in a little bit late because I had kind of tear-stained eyes. I wanted to just kind of slip in and join worship, right, after it had started. So I slip in, and lo and behold, it was a total God setup because I slip in, and I get in my spot, and I'm just like trying to hold myself together and not make any eye contact with him. 
because I'm like, whatever, <laughs> I don't want to do that. And I look up and all of a sudden I hear the introduction and I'm like, you've got to be kidding. We haven't even done that song in like a year. Like, why are they doing that song right now? And I'm like sitting there, like just like, uh, I look up and I see these words. I give my life to you. I'm ready to give you <laughs> the life that I've known so that stinky God used my own words <laughs> against me because he knew my heart. My heart, sometimes it's hard to get there. But God knows your heart and tension, and he will work at getting you there, and he will bring you along. And we have to be willing to say, God, no matter the consequences of this yes. See, now I'm sitting today on the other side of my yes, and I'm like, well, duh. I love this. I, I love what God is doing. Yesterday in the leadership, I mean, it's just like packed and just there's leaders that are hungry to lead and, and to impact our city. There's so much going on. Of course it's a yes, but I didn't know what was on the other side of my yes. God is asking for your yes, and he wants to flood in with his presence. See, in that moment, as I sang those words again to God, the presence of the Lord just flooded through me. See, that's the very best place for us to be, is sitting in a yes, not knowing, but God's presence is so real. You know, sometimes on the other side, right on the other side of our yes, there's some fire. And I will tell you, on the other side of that yes, that youth camp, one week later, we found ourselves in a fiery season where there was a lot felt hot, felt uncomfortable. There was a lot of fire going on. And I think to myself, you know, God could have stopped Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego from ever even making it into the fire, right? You know, he could have put a power force, you know, I just like visualize where it's like, I could just picture how I would have done it if I was God. I would have been like, oh, there's this power force. So like the guards keep trying to push Shadrach and Meshach in there and they push and they just get bounced off or they get electrocuted or something. Like this is how I'm envisioning it, right? Like that is how God's going to rescue them. But you know, that's not what God does. God allows them to go into the fire but here's what happened. God shows up in the fire. And you know what? Sometimes the biggest testimonies are not that God saves you from the fire, but that God was with you in the fire. And you're going to come out of that fire and you're not going to smell like smoke and you're going to have things broken off of you. God is with you. If you're in a fiery season on the other side of your yes and it's hard, and it's hard and it feels hot and it feels uncomfortable. Jesus is with you in the fire. He doesn't want to just protect you from the fire. He wants to be with you, with you in the fire. God is with you. Sometimes he wants to write the bigger story, not by keeping you from the fire, but by being with you in the fire right now. I'm getting directions from my husband real quick. I'm just going to be transparent. up to that screen I just there there was this moment right here just close your eyes right now I don't know where you're at maybe there's some point of surrender right now in your life where even when I sang those words there's something going on and you got to give it to God it's worth it it's worth it and I give my life to
your hands with me this morning. God's presence. Ready to give you the life that I've known. I give my heart to you. Take all of me. I believe you. presence is here. I don't know where you're at right now. I don't know what God is going, speaking to your life, what he's pressing into your spirit. But right now we got to stop. We got to listen. There's something in your life that you've been holding on to. And God's been tapping on. I don't know what it is. Maybe you don't even know Jesus right now. Maybe you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You've never surrendered your heart to God. Today is a moment for you. Today is a moment where you can reach out to Jesus and say three letter word that will change your life. It's yes. It's yes. No matter what's on the other side of that, yes. That we say, God, here's my life. Use me as a vessel. Use me as your vessel today. Close your eyes right now. I want to pray. If you have something in your life that God's put his hand on right now and it's pressing into you, your heart may be pounding right now and you got to surrender. I want you to lift your hand to Jesus right now. There is a yes. God is asking you know it. Only you know what that is. Reach your hand straight up to Jesus. This isn't a timid yes. This is a commit yes. Yes. This is yes. I give you my fear today. I give you my burden. I give you the junk that I've been doing. I give you all the stuff I've said. Not, no, I've said no to you, Jesus. I give it to you, God. Today, Jesus... God, this is a holy moment. Who knows what's on the other side of this yes today, Lord? Who knows what's on the other side of this commitment that says, God, my life is on the line. Whatever you want from my life, God, here it is. Take my finances. Take my time. Take my dreams. Take it all, God. But today I say yes, Lord. God, I don't want a platform, Jesus. I want to be able to influence people to find Jesus. want. Today, God, we ask you, Jesus, I pray for every hand that's lifted, that even right now in the presence of Jesus, right now in the presence of Jesus, there would be a surrender that resounds in the heavens. You know, you know, you know, Jesus, that yes is going to change some lives, change some course, change some destiny. That yes, that yes means everything. You know, there's something that happened to these boys. I want you you to hear me now. You put your hands down. I want you to look at me. There's something that happened to these young men after they said yes. God changed their identity. They went from being just servants to servants of the Most High God. That's even how King Nebuchadnezzar called them. He said, servants of the Most High God. See, I don't care where you work. I don't care where you go to school. You're not just an employee. You're not just a boss. You are a servant of the Most High God. You are called as an ambassador, an emissary of the kingdom. You are called as a missionary. That is your mission field today. Today, God wants to call you. I want to read one quote as we close here. Jim Elliott said this. He's someone that literally ended up giving his life as he went and was a missionary and he literally got killed by some people that he was trying to reach for Jesus. But his impact has resounded around the globe. He said these words, God, I pray. I pray thee light these idle sticks in my life that I may burn for thee. Consume my life, my God, for it is thine. I seek not a long life, but a full one like you. Lord Jesus, that is our prayer. That is our prayer. So just close your eyes one more time. In this moment, in this moment, Jesus has you. If you lifted your hand this morning and God spoke to you this morning, I can't get away from this thought that I want to see a commitment. 
if you raised your hand this morning, I want you to take a step of faith. It's way more comfortable to stay in your seat. It's way more comfortable. And yet today, how loud is your yes to God? If you raised your hand and you know God's asking something from you, would you make your way down here? I wanna pray for you. I wanna lay my hands on you. I want us as a prayer team to cover you. So if you raised your hands, and there was a lot of hands in this room, if you raised your hand, I want you to meet me right down here. There's a moment of significance gonna happen. If you lifted your hand, come down here, please. Come all the way down here. God is going to do something in your life on the other side of your yes today. Come, come on, come on in. All the way in. God's speaking to you. He's, he's talking to you. He's going to meet you. He wants to come all the way down. Come all the way down. God's asking you for everything, but in return, he's going to use your life. So right now, just lift your hands. If you're up here at the altar, lift your hand. We're going to have the prayer team come down in a minute, but I want to pray for you. Jesus, you know. You know every heart, Jesus. You know those that are just giving their lives to you for the first time. You know those that God have specific things that you have spoken to them, God. Areas, Jesus, that you're saying, give it to me, give it to me. God can do more with your yes than with all your energy and might. God loves you. God loves you. He sees you. He knows you. He's, he's running after you. He's running after you. Jesus, we pray. God, I pray for every person. Jesus, at this altar, God, that you would come and you would speak to their hearts, God. You would speak to their lives today, Jesus. God, I pray that you would minister to their hearts, God. In Jesus' name, let there be something that transfers in the spirit, God. Jesus, our yes is yours all the way, God. Can I have the prayer team now just come? I want us to begin, if you're on the prayer team, to come and minister as we go into this last song. My encouragement to you is this. Let your yes be not just today. Let your yes be tomorrow. Let your yes be Tuesday. Let your yes be Wednesday. God has something incredible on the other side of your yes. So we're going to go back into this song. I want us to sing these words to the sun sets for you. Everybody. I want to welcome you to the Pearl Church YouTube channel. I want to thank you for coming by today. I'm in the sanctuary. This is where it all happens. This is where we preach and teach and worship and people get saved. And there's so many incredible things going on right now in the church. And I hope that if you're tuning in, that whatever we're doing blesses you and gets into your heart. Because I know that God's doing something very special in you and in us. All right. So uh, go ahead and subscribe down below and and uh, we'll send you notifications for whenever something new is going on. But thank you. We love you. God bless you from the Pearl Church.